Hello, my name is David Orm Johnson. I was one of the first researchers on transcendental meditation. In uh, 1973, I published a study showing that TM changes how a person reacts to stress by measuring skin resistance and playing loud tones in people's ears. I found that they recovered faster, and I found that the background level of internal stress was less. <clears throat> Since that time, I've had various research-related roles and positions. I was director of research at Marshi International University, and I'm currently the research desk for the Marshi Foundation. Besides doing research myself, and I have published 100 studies on the physiological and psychological effects and sociological effects of TM, I also was involved in collecting research, and so I was the editor of Collected Papers, Volume 1 and Volume 5 of Transcendental Meditation. There are now over 600 studies, which have been published in over 200 universities and research universities around the world. So what I want to talk to you today about is just summarize some of that research for you with the angle of what would be the benefits of practicing Transcendental Meditation for the social worker herself, and then secondly, how, what could she recommend it to her clients for? What could she say that, uh, what kinds of problems would TM address in her clients? So let's, let's begin with the question, what is meditation? Is it a way to relax? Is it a technique to promote health, vitality, and longevity? Is it a means to develop creativity, IQ, and peak mental performance? Or is it a path to inner peace and enlightenment. And I think that what we will see going through some of the research is that it's all of these things and more. This slide summarizes the benefits of the Transcendental Meditation Technique for the social worker herself. You'll, what I'm going to show you is research that shows that you will become more rested, it will reduce your stress, it will reduce your burnout, and it will increase brain integration. It will improve health, improve resilience, and increase self-actualization. And this will allow you to do your job better, to be more compassionate, to be a more effective listener, to have clearer thinking, to make better treatment plans, and to be more involved in relationships and family and, and uh, problems of your clients and with your clients directly. You know, there's a story that if you want to, if a person, if you want to save someone from drowning, you need to be able to swim. And uh, otherwise, you may have all good intentions, but if you can't swim and someone's drowning and you jump in, you just have two people drowning. So the social worker is jumping into great pools of problems. And so you have to be extremely strong. And so to be a better social worker, you have to, you have to get rid of your own stress and become more resilient. Secondly, uh, what I want to cover today is that the benefits of the transcendental meditation technique for your clients. And uh, first of all, you will see all of the same kinds of benefits that the social worker herself would have. You will see that uh, there's a lot of research showing that TM addresses the kinds of problems that your clients may be having, such as anxiety. It decreases anxiety. It decreases PTSD symptoms, decreases drug use, drug abuse, decreases alcohol use, decreases cigarette consumption. It improves relationships and it helps a person think more clearly so that they make better decisions about their lives. So let's begin with looking at the different kinds of meditations that are out there. Uh, you see that most meditations, you may have heard of mindfulness or focused attention meditation at the top of the slide, or open monitoring of your thoughts. Those kinds of meditations work on the level of thinking. What distinguishes the transcendental meditation technique is that it takes a mind from active thinking level to a pure silent level within yourself called the source of thought or pure consciousness or transcendental consciousness. And the whole process is completely automatic and it's been, so it's called automatic self-transcending. It actually transcends the technique. You start with the technique, but there's no effort to hold on to it. It's a, it's a very 
subtle but innocent and spontaneous technique for allowing the mind to just settle down to quieter levels. And when the mind settles down, the body gains deep relaxation. EEG studies show that your brain becomes more integrated and it creates a, a unique state of restful alertness. Now if you see the next slide, uh, illustrates the different kinds of effects on the EEG that these three main kinds of meditation have. Focused attention meditation is focusing on something specific. It could be anything. Often it has people focusing on their breath or it may be focusing on a particular thought or it may be focusing on some external thing like a spot on the wall. And when you focus, what's known is that the brain waves are very fast. It's called gamma EEG and you see those sort of looks like static, very high frequency EEG waves. Open monitoring, also known as mindfulness meditation, involves uh, uh, watching the stream of your thoughts without any particular uh, judgment about them, being non-judgmental about your experiences. And open monitoring meditation also has its characteristic EEG uh, signature, which is called theta waves, about four to six cycles per second. And then automatic self-transcending or transcendental meditation is associated with alpha EEG, which is about eight to 10 hertz uh, EEG, uh, beginning in the front parts of the brain, but it becomes synchronous and coherent across the entire brain. If you look at those wave forms, you can see that they're all lined up with each other. They're all rising and falling together, and that means that the brain is operating in a coherent state. And the frequencies at which the brain waves become coherent and synchronous during the transcendental meditation technique are known to integrate different areas of the brain. So when you do something, there'll be a perceptual area, there's an emotional area, there's a cognitive decision-making area in the frontal part of the brain. All of those different areas have to be put together and working together. Uh, to function effectively and what TM does is it increases the integration of all the different players. TM is kind of like, or the, the alpha EG coherence is kind of like the conductor in an orchestra. You have all these different instruments, they're doing different things, but if they work together with the conductor's beat and he sets the timing, then you have music come out. And if they're go off doing their own thing or if they're offbeat, off, their timing is off, then it makes a horrible sound. So like that, when our brain is working, all the areas are working together in, in a symphonic way, then we have coherent behavior and we're successful and otherwise we're not. So TM uh, increases that EEG coherence. The next slide, we see uh, a, a <coughs> functional magnetic resonance imaging study of what happens in the different regions of the brain during transcendental meditation. And what you see is, is that the frontal executive areas shown by the red, er, red places, this, this is like looking at a head uh, on the left hand side facing to the left, you see in the frontal brain, which is the executive areas of the brain, there's increased activity, increased blood flow, meaning that uh, the overall organizing part of the brain is very active and the person is very wide awake inside. The blue areas, which are down in the brain stem and the pons, are related to basic uh, functions like respiration and heart rate. And that activity decreases and that corresponds to the physiological changes during transcendental meditation of heart rate decreasing and blood pressure decreasing and so forth. So you have this combination of effects of the person be having greater inner awareness at the same time their body is gaining a very deep rest. So it's called restful alertness. So we all know what stress is. <laughs> and TM is really the antidote to stress. It's a time when you can step back from your busy day and from all the work and all the responsibilities and just be within yourself let your mind relax back into this very quiet, restful, alert state. You see an illustration of how the effects of TM on the physiology are in the opposite direction of the fight or flight reflex. With the fight or flight reflex, the body's preparing itself to fight or to run away, and you have faster breathing, faster heart rate, increased blood pressure, increased muscle tension, sweaty palms. This is very 
helpful if you're running away from a lion or have to deal with some extreme situation, run out of a house that's on fire or something like that. But uh, with most of the stresses in modern life, sitting at the office, the computer crashes, and all these things happen, and so it's damaging the body and it's increasing uh, your, you know, your, your, uh, your risk for heart disease and almost every other kind of disease. So stress has been found to be the modern epidemic, and, and we all know that. What TM does is in just the opposite direction. The heart rate decreases, uh, the respiratory rate decreases, blood pressure decreases, muscle tension decreases, and the palms become dry. And this is a meta-analysis of 32 studies, which uh, compared sitting, meditating with eyes closed with sitting and just resting with eyes closed. If you saw two people sitting on a park bench and one was practicing TM and the other was just sitting with his eyes closed meditating, uh, you wouldn't be able to tell which one was meditating and which one was just sitting with their eyes closed. But if you measured their physiology, you would find that the meditators had a greater reduction in plasma lactate, a greater reduction in respiratory rate, and a greater increase in basal GSR, which is a measure of relaxation. And here we see a 30% reduction in cortisol during TM compared with controls. And the middle set of lines with the open clear um, indicators are Restudied controls, so after the controls learned TM and were measured a few weeks later, they also began to show reductions of cortisol during TM. So cortisol, as you know, is a major stress hormone, and so uh, other studies have found that TM reduces cortisol not only during the period of meditation, but also outside of meditation, that long-term meditators tend to have 30 to 40 percent lower levels of cortisol throughout the day and also throughout the night. So this is a very powerful reduction of stress. Next slide shows reduced burnout. This study was actually done with teachers, but it's really social workers or teachers in a way because you're trying to teach a population how to organize their, their life in a better way that they will have fewer problems. So uh, the study showed reduced depression, reduced perceived stress, and overall reduction in teacher burnout in those who learn Transcendental Meditation. And this was a randomized control trial. Now we talked about how TM changes sort of the physiological uh, parameters that are related to stress response, but it also changes the integration of the brain. And the kind of brain changes that it produces have been associated with the most successful kind of people in, uh, in the world. Uh, studies have shown that TM increases brain integration on this particular scale. And then the same scale was used to find that world-class athletes have this kind of brain integration compared with ordinary athletes, have more of it. And top managers have higher levels of brain integration. So common theme across professions was that they all had this style of brain integration. It's not specific to meditation at all. It's, it's specific to doing well, having a well-functioning brain. Next slide shows some of the correlates that have been found of increased brainwave coherence, uh, greater self-awareness, increased inner directedness, improved neurological efficiency, increased moral reasoning, increased creativity, increased intelligence, improved concept learning, increased emotional stability, decreased anxiety, decreased uh, and decreased neuroticism. So as the brain becomes more orderly, then all, then all the cognitive abilities are improved, like the orchestra playing more beautiful, harmonious music, and various problems just kind of melt away. The summary of three randomized control studies, this was on secondary and vocational school students, but it really applies to everybody. And the study showed that compared with napping or compared with just sitting uh, with usual treatment, in this case it was usual school curriculum, or compared with a uh, uh, contemplation meditation technique where the Subjects were contemplating the meaning of something, the meaning of the Tao, T-A-O, the meaning of the Tao, that compared with those other kinds of relaxation, those who practiced TM had increases in creativity. This was over six months or to a year. 
increased practical intelligence. That's the ability of having emotional intelligence, something that social workers really need, the ability to read people and to respond appropriately. Increased field independence, which is the ability to find something that's hidden, a hidden target. That is, if the application of social workers would be able to be able to see three, through complex situations to what's really relevant. Increased mental efficiency and increased fluid intelligence. Fluid intelligence is the ability to think intelligently in novel situations that you haven't been able to, you haven't had a chance to deal with previously. So coming up with new ideas, new solutions, and certainly a social worker is constantly being challenged by new situations, so fluid intelligence would be really important to have. So, so a study by the American Heart Association found that the transcendental meditation what could be recommended for reducing blood pressure, that physicians could recommend transcendental meditation for reducing blood pressure for individuals who had blood pressure over 120 or over 80, which is fairly low. So almost everybody <laughs> should practice TM for prevention, if not to reduce their hypertension. The study also found that TM was the only meditation practice, including mindfulness-based stress reduction, that has been shown to lower blood pressure. And they said because of the many negative studies or mixed results and the paucity of available trials, all of the meditation techniques, including MBSR, received class three, no benefit level of evidence C recommendation. That's Dr. Talk. You probably are familiar with that. And another study, of, uh, actually a 10-year study on average, they followed people over five years. They, they, uh, it was a study of heart patients with coronary heart disease. And the measure was, over the five years, heart attacks, strokes, and death by all causes. And what was found was is that those who learned TM in a randomized control trial had a reduction of 47% in heart attacks, strokes, and death from all causes. The next slide uh, just illustrates that finding. And the next slide shows that TM actually has an effect on all different categories of disease. This was a study I did, published in 1987. And <clears throat> what we did is we had uh, data from Blue Cross Blue Shield on 2,000 meditators over a five-year period compared with normative data and compared with a matched control group that of similar profession and similar age composition. And what was found was, is that on every single category, the TM group had less hospitalization uh, than the norm or the control group. On the average, about 50% less. But for some diseases, like heart disease, it was strikingly less, 90% less, 90% 90, 90 less also for diseases of the nervous system. How can one thing have all these benefits on health? It's just simply that the body heals itself in a state of rest. And what TM does, as we've seen, produces, it produces a state, a kind of a super state of health, of rest. You're not only experiencing deep rest during TM, but also you're experiencing a very coherent state. So the body really needs to communicate with, different, with itself, the different parts of the body communicate with itself, uh, in order for it to heal itself. And with, with TM, you're settling down into a state of deep rest and high communication. So all the different homeostatic feedback loops, which are saying, oh, your blood pressure is too high, we need to do this, or we have to do that. You're disengaging from all other kinds of activity, and the body's in this state of high communication within the different aspects of the physiology, where it can normalize all these feedback loops and systems which are always trying to maintain health, maintain a, 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 an ideal level of health all the time anyway, are allowed to function and they're optimized. So that's how TM uh, has an effect on all levels of health. Whatever is imbalanced, the body knows that and it will do something about it if you give it a chance. And so meditation is the time when you're giving it a chance to do that. TM has also been found to increase self-actualization, and this is particularly uh, relevant to social workers because the, the uh, aspects of self-actualization include being more in the present, being more compassionate, uh, increased ability to have 
warm personal relationships and so that these are just the kind of qualities that and skills that social workers need and it's not something that you're learning something it's just when you get rid of your own stresses then compassion and ability to have warm interpersonal relationships is a natural byproduct so this meta-analysis of 42 studies compared TM with other relaxation and other meditation techniques and it found that TM had about three times the effect on increasing self-actualization, very important result. And younger biological age. Uh, this study measured biological age on an index. It measured blood pressure, near point vision, uh, <clears throat> vital capacity. The measure of biological age used in this study was an index of blood pressure, vital capacity, and near point vision. And the way it works is, is that you would go in and measure yourself, say you're 40 years old, which I did actually on this study when I was 40 years old. And then they compare what you're in, what you, how you do on this index with the normative data. For that index, how, what was, how old is the average person? So I had the biological age of a 27-year-old when I turned 40, so that was really good news. And my wife even turned out to be younger, <laughs> so she was happy. So this is, this is just amazing. The, the, the final kind of benefit of reducing stress is that you age more gracefully. And so that's really a great, powerful benefit of TM. Now I want to turn to the benefits of TM for the social workers' clients. Of course, they will get the same basic physiological and neurological and cognitive and health benefits uh, that you will as the social worker, so you can offer them that. But TM also addresses many of the kinds of problems that your clients may be facing. Probably number one is anxiety. Uh, and this slide shows that compared with uh, placebo, other relaxation, other meditation, progressive muscle relaxation, relaxation EMG, biofeedback, mantra meditation, concentration, all these different techniques were studied, and TM had over twice the effect on reducing anxiety. So it's very powerful, and it makes sense. If it's reducing blood pressure during meditation, reducing heart rate, its physiological effects are the opposite of anxiety, then it makes sense that it decreases anxiety, not only physiologically, but also psychologically. Next slide shows a comparison of TM with mindfulness meditation on another meta-analysis. <clears throat> on the right-hand side, you see study groups with elevated anxiety, and larger reductions are found in people who are more anxious to begin with. So if, if someone's not anxious and they meditate, then it's not going to reduce anxiety. It's kind of a duh effect, but uh, if, you know, that's in looking at the effect sizes of different techniques, you have to take into account where are they starting from. So with, st with groups that are more anxious to begin with, mindfulness meditation does have an effect on reducing anxiety, but TM has about a 70% larger effect. Looking at all studies that use treatment as usual controls, TM also had a larger effect size. So however you divided up the populations that you're studying, it was more effective than mindfulness in reducing anxiety. <clears throat> Now the next slide shows reductions in symptoms of PTSD and a lot of people uh, that you will be working with will have some symptoms of PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, these particular studies were on war veterans and you see four different studies on TM on the left and it's the effect size on reducing PTSD symptoms. And uh, five different, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, yes, five different studies on mindfulness-based stress reduction on the right-hand sides. TM has about twice the effect as mindfulness-based meditations in reducing PTSD symptoms in war veterans. So here's an example of some of the changes that can be expected to be found in people who are under highly stressed conditions. Uh, it, they have a improvement in, they will have an improvement in stress reactivity, improvement in uh, PTSD symptoms, reduction in emotional numbness, decreased depression, fewer family problems, improvement in insomnia, reduced anxiety, reduced alcohol problems, and reduced 
employment problems. TM has also been shown to be very effective in decreasing drug abuse. This is a meta-analysis of 70 studies comparing TM with peer influence uh, interventions and with preventative education interventions. TM also reduces alcohol use. This is a meta-analysis of 97 studies compared with the most used, uh, currently used treatments for alcohol use, which is peer influence, relaxation, DUI programs, preventive education. Also is effective in decreasing cigarette use. So the way, the way TM works on reducing uh, use of various substances is that in normalizing the body, it reduces the motivation to use them. <clears throat> so why do people take drugs? It depends on how they're feeling. If they're feeling anxious, they'll take a downer. If they're feeling depressed, they'll take an upper. So what they're doing is trying to balance the body and create an optimal internal condition of the body and an optimal feeling state. So if you meditate and you're getting into that state of deep rest where that kind of balancing takes place automatically, then the desire to take drugs naturally drops away. It's not as if you're, you know, with some great strain, you know, you're stopping smoking. Suddenly you become aware, uh, you know, that's not so great what this is doing to my body. I think I won't do that. Uh, or in a, and when you kick the habit, it's much easier to deal with the symptoms of withdrawal and so forth if you have this way to go back into deep rest and, and meditate. There's been a recent study that uh, TM helps patients with HIV and reduce in improving their general health and improving their functioning on uh, HIV functional assessment total score. Uh, you may be dealing with youth with their various problems in school and a study has shown with inner city kids has shown that TM decreased high school dropout rate. Uh, it increased the percentage of students graduating. Uh, particularly important is the, are the bars on the left-hand side, the low GPA students. These are students who are having trouble in school, they're not making good grades, and you see there's a, quite a dramatic improvement in the ones who learn to meditate. On the right-hand side, you see the high GPA students. And the high GPA students pretty much, well, they, they have 100% graduating whether they meditate or not. So they don't, they don't need it, at least not for the purpose of graduating. They're doing well at school anyway. So, but this is really, really important for the kinds of populations that the social worker is likely to be dealing with who are kids who are having trouble in school. And this is something you can offer them, which is just going to really be a life changer for them. There's a lot of big school projects going on and very inspiring uh, stories and research coming out about it. And uh, meditation, practicing transcendental meditation increased the rate of being accepted to college and post-secondary school. So kids were, were doing better in school more likely to graduate, and more likely to get accepted to further education and to continue with their education. It's just some other slides. Uh, it, it's, TM has been found to reduce cholesterol. That's a big problem. The populations you deal with may have terrible dietary habits, and uh, decreasing cholesterol would be important for them. You can offer TM to them for this particular problem as well. And it's been shown to uh, improve insulin resistance in patients with coronary heart disease. And here's Dr. Oz. He's a, he's a great uh, proponent of TM and uh, very enthusiastic about it, talking about the same research. And uh, finally, I'll end up with some studies on aging. <clears throat> this was a study that was done with elderly people who were in a home for the elderly. They were all in their 80s at the time the study began. It was a random assignment study uh, uh, assigning people to four different groups, transcendental meditation technique, mindfulness, a relaxation response, and a no-treatment comparison. And this first slide shows just on, on feeling less old, a self-rating scale, which is really when you're aging, probably one of the number one things you're interested in is you want to feel better. And the meditators felt better. TM actually improved how old they felt. They felt less old. But they also changed on objective measures like cognitive flexibility. 
as we age, we tend to forget and the cognitive decline, but TM reduced that decline, so they actually, on ability to, to do new things, uh, have that flexibility, uh, they improved on it compared to the other groups. And improved association learning, ability, that is a measure of memory, the Wexler memory scale, they actually improved on memory compared to the other groups. Decreased systolic blood pressure compared to these other slides, so this is great. It's a you know a risk factor for heart disease, and increased longevity at the three-year point on this study. 100% of those who were randomly assigned to learn TM, it wasn't self-selection, but you know, just by a flip of a coin, they were put into that group. All of them were still alive, <clears throat> and 10 to 30% of the people in the other groups died in that three-year period, which is not unusual. You know, they're, they were on the average 83 at the beginning of the study. So and then a, a follow-up, the next slide will show a 18-year follow-up of different randomized trials. What the study did is it took, it followed up the subjects who were in these blood pressure studies, some very good NIH-supported studies have been done on hypertension with TM. And these are people, uh, in one study they were in their 80s, another study they were in their 50s. And uh, following up over a 20-year period, looking at actuarial statistics, you could look up on mortality statistics and find out who's still alive, who died. And so what you see is the blue line, there's um, higher percentage of people who are still surviving as the years are going by. So on the vertical axis, you see the cumulative percent, percent surviving. So it starts out 100% are alive at the beginning of the study. And out to about 10 years, they're going from, say, and some of them from 80-year-old to 90-year-olds, many fewer meditators are dying than the ones who were randomly assigned to these other uh, groups, which, and, and usually the control group was health education. But then after a while, after 15, 20 years, the grim reaper <laughs> wins out. Everybody dies. But on, a, on average, the meditators lived over two years longer and in a much higher quality of life. This is really an important thing. I told my mom, my mom, you know, you should meditate because it's going to reduce your, increase your longevity. She said, who wants to live longer? You know, I said, but mom, you know, you'll have, you'll be more creative, you'll have, feel less old, you'll have greater flexibility. So it's really important. You're not only going to be living longer if you meditate, but you're also going to have a higher quality of life. So what is meditation? Is it a way to relax? Yes, definitely. Is it a technique to produce health, vitality, and longevity? Certainly is. Lots of research shows that. And it's also a means to develop creativity, IQ, and peak mental performance. And it's a path to inner peace and enlightenment. Maybe we'll talk about that in a, at another time. So thank you very much for your attention. And I hope you've learned transcendental meditation yourself as a social worker and experience the benefits for yourself person, personally and, and, and in your ability to do your job and to have something really great that you can offer to your clients to help them, give them a tool whereby they can cope better with their lives. So thank you very much.